Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Ben Stone. You're watching CanalGratis.com. And if you haven't noticed already, I spend a lot of my time fishing alone. In fact, the majority of the time that I'm fishing, I am a solo fisherman, which presents a lot of challenges. But beyond that, I love to musky fish, which in turn means I musky fish alone 99% of the time. Musky fishing is already a huge challenge to begin with, but when you are fishing muskies solo, there are a lot of things that you have to be aware of, do correctly, and not screw up in order to catch these fish. And I'm asked all the time how I've gotten so good at solo musky fishing. So in today's video, I'm gonna discuss five of my most important things when it comes to musky fishing solo. These are gonna be tips or things that you should just keep in mind. Regardless, I hope that these things will help improve any solo musky fisherman who is in need of guidance. Now, when it comes to musky fishing, arguably one of the toughest and most stressful parts of musky fishing is netting a fish. And this is perhaps the most difficult thing that can be done when musky fishing by yourself. I can't tell you how tough it is to net these fish by yourself. Having an extra person just to net fish is like one of the most valuable things in musky fishing, but I don't always have that luxury. So I am left having to net these fish by myself. So simultaneously fighting a muskie, trying to get into the net, it's a struggle and it's very tough. But one of the big things that is important to me when muskie fishing by myself is having a very, very light manageable landing net. A lot of muskie landing nets are big, chunky, beefy, heavy pieces of equipment, and they are very, very, very hard to handle when you are alone. So having a landing net that is very, very light that I can hold with one hand effortlessly is extremely, extremely important. This is a Frable Conservation Series landing net. Of course, it's got the big basket and the big hoop for big muskies, but this net is extremely, extremely light. And it's very easy to extend out and it is very, very light. I can hold this with one hand, I can extend my arm, and it's not putting a lot of strain on my arm. If I need to hold this position for an extended period of time, my arm isn't gonna tense up on me. And that makes netting these fish extremely, extremely easy. This is arguably my most important piece of equipment that I have when I'm in the boat solo, is my light landing net. It's easy to manage, and in turn, that allows me to net these fish a lot easier. Another thing to keep in mind is keeping your landing net extended when you are fishing alone. I know when you have multiple people in the boat, you want this net collapsed and out of the way to free up space, but when I am solo, I don't need as much space. So I have this net extended and ready to go because the less things that I have to do when fighting a fish, the better. I've been there where I forget to extend my landing net and now I'm fighting a fish one-handed, trying to get this net extended, trying not to get the basket snagged on any lures or miscellaneous junk that might be laying around in my boat. If my landing net is pre-extended, it is ready to go. So whenever I hook into a fish, I am all set and I have less and less to worry about. The second big thing that I keep in mind when I'm musky fishing solo is I like fishing out of the back of the boat. I've been asked countless times, why am I always fishing out of the back of the boat if I am solo? And there are a couple of reasons for that. My first reason, I have a tiller boat, which means my electronics are mounted in the back, my transducer is in the back, my electronics are in the back. So being able to have that information right in front of my face, but also read the side imaging super accurately to my bait coming in, I can tell if I have fish following with my electronics back here and it's all in close proximity to me. The other thing, and perhaps the most important thing, is the back of the boat is more stable than the front. That might not seem like a big deal, but when figure eighting fish, if you have a wobbly boat or you're higher up, it's gonna make figure eights more difficult. You're gonna be more prone to spooking fish off. When you're lower to the water, you're less likely to spook those fish off. Whereas if you're higher up, those fish are gonna be able to see you a lot easier. Another thing that you guys have seen me do in videos before, is when I'm fishing a topwater bait, I'll kneel down when I have a fish behind to lower my profile to that fish. So being in the back of the boat gives me a lot of advantages when it comes to musky fishing. It's more stable, I'm lower to the water, it's better for figure eights. Another big bonus too when fishing solo is now I don't have my trolling motor as an obstacle when fighting fish. I have a lot more open space back here to fight fish, get things out of the way. It gives me my casting deck to hold my rods, baits, my landing net, and keep gear out of the way so the back of the boat is nice and clean and obstacle free. So when that fish is on the end of the line, there is less to get in my way to potentially screw that fish up. Now going off of what I just said, having a clean, mess-free boat is another thing that I am very, very meticulous about when I solo musky fish. I've been there before when you go to net a fish, you go to pick up a rod, you go to do something, and you snag a lure, you trip over something, or you break something. So 
I make sure to have a spotless boat. I make sure everything that I can have in storage is in storage. The less things to snag my net on, the better. Being mindful of small things like that can make a big difference when it comes to muskie fishing because you never know exactly how these situations are gonna play out. And the last thing anybody wants is to go and net a fish, to go and grab a rod and break something, snag the net. So by keeping my boat meticulously clean, keeping everything in storage, not having baits laying all over the place, that's gonna make a big difference in the long run. I know it seems like a very simple thing to mention, but you'd be surprised at how many people that I've muskie fished with that have a very, very cluttered boat and it's hard to navigate. It is hard to fish out of. If you're fishing solo, you have the boat to yourself, make sure it is prepared for your day of fishing. Make sure it is prepared to net fish and you will be a more happy angler in the end. I can tell you that. Now my next tip here is a little unorthodox, but my next recommendation is to invest in a camera to film yourself fishing. That might sound a little silly at first, but hear me out. If you look at some of the best pro athletes in sports, they spent a lot of their practice time, a lot of their spare time, re-watching game footage to correct on mistakes they've made. And it's the same exact thing with fishing. I've been filming for a very, very, very long time, and I have picked up on so many mistakes that I've made over the course of my years of fishing that I've been able to correct because of myself filming. I'm able to re-watch mistakes that I've made, fish that I've lost, fish that I've missed, and keep in mind those mistakes that I might have made to correct myself in the future the next time I have an opportunity. Nowadays, the older GoPros are extremely, extremely cheap and affordable, and it really doesn't cost much to invest in something like a Yolotech power stick or a power supply to run these cameras the entire day. GoPros are a great camera. They're a wide angle lens. They film great quality footage. And being able to go back and watch footage is not only something that is really cool and a great way to hold memories, but it is also a very, very effective way to improve your form, improve your skills when it comes to fishing. I have so much solo musky footage of mistakes that I've made that I can always go back and remind myself not to do the same stupid thing again. And that is why Filming is a big recommendation to me because it is the best way, in my opinion, to learn besides being out on the water and experiencing things for yourself. And my last tip here is probably the most basic thing, but that is simply to just be prepared. If you are not prepared to catch a muskie, the experience will not end well. So it's little things like having the proper tools, having your tools out and readily available, keeping your boat clutter free, having your landing net pre-deployed, making sure there's no obstacles in the way of netting fish and keeping proper form when fishing. All of the above are very, very minute details, but they all add up into something much bigger. That is making yourself the best angler that you can be on the water. Fishing solo is tough. Musky fishing solo is even tougher, but these are five things that I hope you guys can keep in mind for the next time that you're out in the water that might help you catch more fish. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you next week.